Okay, here's a letter that you don't want to get from the FCC. It is a warning letter for unlicensed radio operation. Now look, it says here, this office has information indicating that you may have operated an unlicensed station on 94.5. All they say is this office has information. They don't have any proof. They never came up here and actually inspected us, and they never measured it. Apparently, what happened was they made a phone call, and somebody went out into their car and turned on 94.5, heard something, and reported back. Of course, it says here, unlicensed operation of this radio station must cease immediately. Here's the device that the FCC apparently is alluding to. It's a little homebrew transmitter that we built. We built it out of a cable modulator, modified it, and then put it in this box. And then we feed it by a Gettner laser prism and uh, EQ system. But that's it. But I've got something else to show you. Okay, at 94.5, obviously with our little Part 15 transmitter shut off, we're hearing something. It appears to be a station from uh, 95.1 with spurs all the way down at 94.5. Isn't that interesting? Check this out. It's even louder at 94.3. Hi, I'm so, could it be that whoever the FCC decided to call to find out if we were actually broadcasting was actually hearing a spur from 95.1? Interesting. I think that could possibly be termed as harassment. Well, I don't know how they got their information, or who they got it from. But even at a Part 15, this little radio station is doing a real service for a lot of young people interested in music. And I think the fact that they're interested in music and spending time here in these studios playing live for their friends and uh, their family, basically, I think is a whole lot better than having them join gangs and being out on the street and doing drugs and it's a much better benefit and it's it's constructive for their future as well so I hope they take that in consideration when they're um, thinking about uh, harassing this little radio station here's a look at all the bands that have played live on the radio program these are all kids that have played live on the radio show all of these guys in groups over the years. We started doing this in about 2000. But all these guys wouldn't have a way to play for their peers, to play for their friends if it weren't for this little radio show. Parents love this. It's constructive for their kids. Why is there such a problem with letting them use the airwaves to do this? I don't get it. Well, we're going to continue to keep on doing the show over the internet. That's not going to stop. And uh, as soon as we find out a way to get a Part 15 system hooked up again for 94.5, um, that's apparently acceptable to the FCC, uh, we'll do that. Or if we can prove that the system we have is okay, we'll keep using it. But until then, um, it'll be over the internet. We've teamed up with a, uh, an Australian uh, internet broadcaster, uh, Station X, and they are rebroadcasting the show on uh, Tuesday morning, I believe, the first two hours of it, so you can catch it then, expanding our audience there. And then also we're looking at uh, buying time on a, a shortwave broadcast station over on the East Coast that will beam our signal over the entire country, which would be really nice, although uh, broadcast costs are a little high there, and we've got to get into fundraising. Venus and Furs.